Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hello there. Welcome back. This will be for Amos chapter 9, and this will finish up Amos for us. Israel shall be sifted among all nations. In the last days they shall be gathered again into their own land, and it shall become productive. Uh, number five has to do with the second coming. This is the fifth vision that, uh, that Amos sees. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. At the second coming none shall escape the judgments of God. This vision deals with the sifting of the wicked from Israel and its subsequent restoration. Verse 2, Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. In other words, there's no place to hide. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they may they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them, and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. Those who seem to avoid punishment in this life will be punished. No one will be able to hide from the Lord at that day. And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up wholly like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt." the Nile over overflowing. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and hath founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtor and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying, or saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Amos seemed to be pointing out in response to an assertion of spiritual superiority on the part of Israel that Jehovah is God of all peoples from beyond Damascus to the land of Cush, and he, he warned Israel in unmistakably plain language that the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. Those who have the greater light will also have the greater condemnation. Verse 9, For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the ground, upon the earth. Not one righteous person will be left behind. By preserving a righteous remnant, the Lord, the Lord creates a group of people who are humble and spiritual. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which, said, which say, The evil shall not overtake, nor prevent, or confront us. In that day, meaning in the last days, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it in the days of old, as in the days of old. The temple in Jerusalem will be built in its proper place. Who will build the temple in Jerusalem? Zechariah says, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, the Savior, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall be, bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both, and the crowns shall be to Helam and to Tob Tobijah, and to Jediah, and to Hen, and the son of Zephaniah, and for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord." And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you, and this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. They that are far off are the Jews who have been scattered afar. By what power and under whose authorization shall the work be done? There is only one place under the whole heavens where the keys of temple building are found. There is only one people who know how to build temples and what to do in them when they are completed. That people is the Latter-day Saints. The temple in Jerusalem will not be built by the Jews who have assembled there for political purposes as at present. It will not be built by a people who know nothing whatever about the sealing ordinances and their application to the living and the dead. It will not be built by those who know nothing about Christ and his laws and the mysteries reserved for the saints. But it will be built by Jews who have come unto Christ and who once again are in the true fold of the ancient shepherd and who are learned 
anew and who have learned anew about temples because they know about that Elijah did come not to sit in a vacant chair at some Jewish feast of the Passover, but to the Kirtland Temple on April 3, 1836. To Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery, the temple in Jerusalem will be built by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They that are far off, they that are come from an American Zion, they who have a temple in Salt Lake City, will come to Jerusalem to build their another holy house in the Jerusalem portion of the mountains of the Lord's house. That was by Bruce R. McConkie. Verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this, all righteous people who take up themselves upon themselves the name of the Lord, be he Israelite or Gentile, will be brought into the kingdom. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Israel will return to her ancestral lands as promised in the Abrahamic covenant. The earlier curses will be reversed. Verse 15, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall be no more. They shall no more be pulled upon out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord their, thy God. The righteous remnant will return to be restored to fulfill the promises made to Abraham. So that's the end of the chapter, and that's the end of Amos, and we'll see you next time. Bye.